Hi there, everyone, and welcome to The Daily Gardener, a podcast about gardening, botanical history, and literature. I'm your host, Jennifer E. Blaine, and today is September 13th. Today, we celebrate a German landscape gardener who introduced English gardens to Germany. We'll also learn about an American painter and printmaker best known for her incredible painting called Love Locked Out. But she was also a gardener, and she painted many beautiful landscapes. We'll also look back at a cautionary story about a botanist who protected his peach crop at a tremendous cost, using terrible judgment, too, by the way. And we grow that garden library today with a book that will help you learn how to cook with all of those garden veggies. If you're running out of ideas, this book is perfect for you. And then we'll wrap things up with a glimpse back into a magnificent magnificent garden property in Baden, Germany on this day back in 1835. It's quite a story. But first, here's today's curated news. Well, last week when I resumed the podcast, I started out with curated news that was featuring a recipe, and it was those little Rice Krispie treats that look like pumpkin pies. The Rice Krispie part is the pie crust, and then the pie filling is traditional pumpkin pie filling. Well, today we're starting out with a recipe again. Can't help it. I run across what I run across, and then I share it with you. But today's recipe is from Deb Perl. Perlman, the woman behind Smitten Kitten, and this is a recipe for her butternut squash and caramelized onion galette. And isn't that a marvelous fall combination? Now, Deb shared this recipe last November, but of course it's making the rounds again because it's just that good. And here's how she introduced it in House and Garden. She writes, once upon a time, I was obsessed with savory galettes. To me, there were few higher callings than serving for dinner a big green salad and a free-form rustic tart that you could fill with, well, whatever you pleased. But my favorite galette of all was the butternut squash and caramelized onion galette I made on a whim one October evening. Years and one kid later, I went to make the recipe again for a bring a plate dinner and was horrified at the amount of labor it took to yield a dinky galette that would barely serve four for dinner despite the six servings I'd suggested. So I doubled the crust and made more filling and replaced some white flour with whole meal. What came out of my oven was a small pizza-sized wonder of wonders that fed my family for three nights. Well, to me, this one's a no-brainer. If you love butternut squash and caramelized onions, I mean, two fantastic foundational ingredients here, then this tart is definitely for you. Now, as with all of my curated articles, I will share this in the Facebook group for the show, so you'll be able to find it there, but you'll also be able to see it in today's show notes. So you've got two different options to track this down. Now, I have two other things that I want to share with you really quick before we get to today's botanical history. First is, I recently got a little notebook that I'm using to document the recipes that I'm curating for my family. And you know, this idea came to me as I was going through my grandmother's recipe box which really, when you think about it, is like a little time capsule of all of the wonderful foods that were part of our family life when I was growing up. And so I'm putting together this little notebook for fall of 2021. And as I curate and collect these new recipes that I'm trying, they're all going in this little notebook. And maybe 20, 30, 40 or even 50 years from now, my own kids and grandkids could be looking through that little notebook and saying, ah, 
that's where mom or grandma got that recipe from. Just kind of a fun little activity. And I love these little homemade ways of recording family history in real time. So go ahead and steal that idea if it appeals to you. Then the other item that I wanted to bring to your attention today is this book that's coming out tomorrow. It's called Apples Never Fall. And if you're a regular listener of the show, you know that I sometimes recommend fiction books like this one, especially if I love the cover. And this book by Leanne Moriarty is beautiful, especially for fall. It's got a great garden vibe to it. And on the cover, are four red apples. You can tell that they are fresh picked fall apples. It's an absolutely beautiful cover with a November stormy gray sky in the background. And that's it. And it's just an absolutely striking cover. Now, if Leanne's name is ringing a bell, it's because she is the New York Times bestselling author of Big Little Lies, and Nine Perfect Strangers. And so if you enjoyed those books, which became super popular in the last couple of years, you probably already know about this book that's slated to come out tomorrow. And Entertainment Weekly's early review of this book says, Apples Never Fall is a high wire act that blends marital drama, a long con, a potential murder, and competitive tennis. Now I see over at Amazon, this book is now an editor's pick, meaning that Amazon is picking it to be a really good book for the fall. So check it out. I'll put a link to it in today's show notes. It looks like the hardcover is selling for $17. You can get the Kindle version for $15. And once again, it's Apples Never Fall by Leanne Moriarty. And it's got that beautiful apple cover. All right, it's time for today's botanical history. All right, here's botanical history for today, September 13th. Today's the birthday of Friedrich Ludwig von Skell, the German landscape gardener who introduced English gardens to Germany, and his planting style is still prevalent in German landscapes today. One of Friedrich's most significant commissions was at Nymphenburg Palace. That's where he transformed formal Baroque gardens into English landscapes for King Max I. Now, this transformation was a compelling blend of old and new. He left some of the more established gardens in the center of the garden untouched. And this accomplished two things. One, it showed respect for what had come before. Those gardens were beloved. And two, it was a wonderful way to gradually introduce Germans to a new, more romantic, naturalistic style. Now, while he was at Nymphenburg, he built a historic glass house that's called the Geranium House. And today, that building features a permanent exhibit that features the history of Friedrich's work at the palace. Friedrich recognized the importance of natural borders along woodlands, open spaces between trees and shrubs, and he was also a fan of removing trees for the sake of the landscape. And in case you're wondering, he did value trees, but he placed more value on certain types of trees over others. For instance, he valued oaks and lindens over more common species like the maple or the ash. Good taste. And today is also the birth of Anna Massey Lee Merritt, the American painter and printmaker who was born on this day, September 13th in 1844. Although she was born in Philadelphia, she actually spent most of her life in England, and she's best remembered for a beautiful painting called Love Locked Out. She painted this in 1890. It shows a romantic woman leaning against a door 
You can tell she's knocking on the door. She's kind of sagging against it. And you can tell she's trying to get in to the other side. Well, the backstory here is that Anna painted this to honor her husband, who died just three months after their wedding. In addition to portraiture and religious work, Anna painted landscapes. She was a gardener. She once wrote, The nastiest of all weeds is that sycophant, Doc, also called Herb Patience. When you grasp the strong-seeming stalk, it has no fiber. It melts away in a soft squash, leaving its root in the ground. Even nettles are pleasanter to touch. And it was also on this day, September 13th, in 1916, that the Hartford Current out of Connecticut reported this story. Dr. Henry Hurd Rusby, a noted botanist and dean of the medical faculty at Columbia University, shot and wounded a young boy named Alfred Fasano when he and three other boys were pilfering peaches from his orchard. A double-barreled shotgun was the weapon that was used. And Dr. Rusby told the police that he'd been annoyed by boys stealing his fruit, and he only intended to frighten them. And unfortunately, he actually ended up wounding Alfred Fasano. It's a little-known story about this well-respected botanist. It's time for today's Unearthed Words. Today's Unearthed Words come to us from Giles Milton from his best-selling book, Churchill's Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, and the subtitle is The Mavericks Who Plotted Hitler's Defeat. Here's an excerpt. He was the first to admit that he had been singularly ill-qualified for all his previous jobs. Just a few months earlier, he'd accepted the editorship of a gardening magazine. Nobody could know less about gardening than me, he said, but it didn't stop him dispensing advice for his readers. I would solemnly give them my views on whether it was better to plant globe artichokes in September or March. Now at last, He had fallen into a job for which he was extremely well qualified, one in which the only seeds to be planted were those of wholesale destruction. It's time to grow that garden library with today's book, Vegan 100 by Gaz Oakley. This book came out in 2018, and the subtitle is Over a Hundred Incredible Recipes from Avant-Garde Vegan. In this book, Gaz celebrates the versatility and adventure you can find when you dedicate time to creating new dishes with vegetables. Gaz is a famous chef thanks to social media and his fantastic channels on Instagram and YouTube, where he shares many of his recipes with his avid fan base. Now, as for himself, Gaz decided to change his diet and go vegan a couple of years ago. And ever since, he's found new ways to make exciting and tasty meals starring vegetables that you'll want to make again and again. Gaz is known for creating innovative and straightforward food that helps people, even gardeners, see new possibilities for plant-based dishes. This book is 224 pages of vibrant vegetables that are featured in many full-page photographs. They steal the show and define modern vegan cooking. You can get a copy of Vegan 100 by Gas Oakley and support the show using the Amazon link in today's show notes for around $8. 
finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. It was on this day, September 13th in 1835, that the British artist and writer James Forbes stopped at the castle in Baden during his horticultural tour through Germany, Belgium, and France. Keep in mind, this is back in 1835, and this is what he wrote about his experience in Baden. The tremendous precipices of rock and plantations render this spot the most picturesque on my tour through Germany. There is an excellent promenade called the English Garden with neatly kept walks and pieces of lawn and a magnificent building called the Conversation House with numerous orange trees arranged in front of it. In the interior, I was much surprised to see in a very spacious room that was splendidly furnished a large concourse of ladies and gentlemen on a Sunday very busy at the gaming tables. In fact, the ladies appeared to be fully as expert gamblers as the gentlemen. What a memory of the conversation house in the garden at the castle in Baden. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener. And remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced in lovely Maple Grove in Wyoming, Minnesota. If you want to read today's show notes, just head on over to thedailygardener.org. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for my free Friday newsletter. And don't forget that you have a standing invitation to join the free Facebook group for listeners of the show. Just search for Daily Gardener Community the next time you're on Facebook and request to join. Last but not least, you can always get in touch by emailing me at jennifer at the dailygardener.org. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling, and as always, have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.